Hello and welcome to Mel Make Stuff. My name is Melissa and in this video, which is the first of a series of videos about color work, planning, organization, and swatching, we are going to talk today about how I organize my color work yarn stash. As you know, if you have been watching my videos in the past, a lot of what I like to knit is color work. And so over the years, I have built up what I would consider to be a relatively substantial stash of different colors. And so let's take a look at how I store them. This is an Ikea Alex drawer unit on casters. I had originally purchased this to store sewing projects like as they are in progress, but I repurposed it for color work yarns about a year ago. The main thing that I have found that works best for me personally is some kind of storage situation where I can see all of the colors that I have in one layer. So you definitely don't need a special piece of furniture for this. A lower cost option would be one of those plastic like under the bed boxes or even like an unused pizza box, like anything that is flat, easy to store, and you can see all of your colors in one layer so you don't have to go digging through things. I used to keep all of my color work yarns in a plastic storage bin like this one, but having to pull everything out to look at colors was a pain, and I was finding that I would procrastinate on getting projects started because of that, so now I only use this bin for larger quantities of color work yarn that might work well for a main color in a garment. So what types of yarns do I keep in here? These yarns are all what I would consider to be traditional color work yarn. So they are non-superwash, they are fingering to sport weight, and they for the most part are 100% wool. I do use superwash yarn for color work uh, occasionally, I just don't store it in these particular places, so we're not going to talk about that today. How are these yarns organized? I personally like to keep these grouped by color. So in the first drawer I have red, orange, yellow. In the second drawer I have my greens and my blues. The third drawer is purples and pinks. And then I have some neutrals in the last drawer. And then again, any yarns that I have a larger amount of, I keep in this plastic bin to use for the primary color in a garment or a larger project. How do you build a color work stash? My suggestion would be to assess what types of projects you like to make and then slowly build up that stash over time. So just for a little context, I have been knitting for about 30 years and some of this stuff is probably close to that old. So it has really built up over time. Uh, so keep that in mind as you're seeing all of this. Like this is absolutely not necessary if you're just getting into color work. A stash like mine is probably the most useful if you are into Fair Isle style color work. So projects that use a lot of different colors. If you're more into Scandinavian style or simpler color work that uses, you know, between two and five colors, you probably don't need something like this. Lots of these yarns are leftovers from other projects, mini skeins, samples from festivals, and also things I've gotten in yarn swaps. I'll save pieces as small as this so that I can swatch for color. So we'll be talking about this a little bit more in one of the next videos in the series. As I've gotten more and more into very complex color work knitting over the years, one way that I have started to build this stash up even further is when I'm ordering yarn for a project, whether it's color work or not, I will see if that store sells any of these 25 gram balls that are typically used for color work, like Jameson and Smith or Jameson's of Shetland, that type of thing. And if I see anywhere in my palette where there appears to be a little bit of a hole, I will maybe just order one ball in that order that I'm already making for my other project. I know that that's not always in the budget. It's not always in my budget either, but it's something that I've done here and there over the years to build this up. Another thing that I like to invest in, particularly if I like a specific brand or a specific mill, is a color card from that brand or mill. I have color cards out here from Jameson's of Shetland, Harrisville Designs, and Bart yarns, which are all yarns that I use a lot for color work. These color cards can be a really good investment if you aren't able to see the range of colors in a yarn shop like in person. So no yarn shops near me carry any of these yarns, but I've used them in the past and I know that I really like them. Because of that, I went ahead and got color cards so that I can choose colors to order in the future and know, you know, within a certain range of gauges that those yarns will work for the project. Using a color card isn't 100% foolproof because lots, color lots and dye lots will vary over time, but that's just sort of part of the game. It will get you close to that color on your color card, and sometimes that's the best we can do. 
We'll be talking more about how I use these color cards later in this series. So this has just been a short video for now about how I store my colorwork yarns. So if you have enjoyed this, please subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell so that you're notified when I release the next two videos in this series, which will be coming out next Friday and then the Friday after that. So I will see you then. Thanks. Bye-bye.